Okay, I can hear myself from here. I can wish I could put audio into the stream somehow. Um, let me see if I can do that real quick. I just want to do it right by doing free music for streaming. So streaming on free music for streaming on Twitch. Also, is that coming? Nope. Um, let me just see what Pretzel does real quick, and then I kind of want to rest my brain. I haven't set up a Windows app. That's fine. Um, we're just not gonna have music today. I don't know any reason why I did that. Hi y'all. Um, hey y'all. Welcome to my coding session today. We are going to be working on um, a new iOS app that I have planned. It's completely new from scratch, uh, so it'll be fun. It's basically a coffee, it's a timer app, but for coffee, so it's gonna do the count. I'm really big into pour over coffee lately. No, this has been about going on for about a year now. I mean, for the year, not a year, the year. Um, so it is a app that's going to allow me to say how much coffee I have ground, um, calculate how much water is needed, how much water is needed for the bloom, how long I should set the bloom, and then a count up timer so that like once the blooming is done, we can just count up and see how long this one's gonna take. Um, so with that being said, and then it'll let me adjust the coffee to water ratio and store that in like probably just in user preferences. Um, I do have a fun little thing here. Oh, why am I being twice? Hold on. I think it's audio. We don't need both. We just need one. Um, and we're going to make it mono and we're going to say zero. Nope. Okay, so one's on, one's off. Okay, so I think that should be better maybe yeah okay um so that should be good um sorry about that cool so with that being said let's just take a look at what I'm wanting to build first uh, I kind of did a little sketch out so that I knew what at least the first screen will be um, it's gonna be a lot of action stuff like that when you hit edit it goes into a different screen um, I don't know if this is gonna be a um, I don't know if this is gonna be a Cool. I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's going to be a, um, actually second screen here or just a modal that lets me change. So it'll come up from the bottom. Um, that's just going to be something that I have to adjust and figure out as what, what's easier for me. Um, this is just kind of like a proof of concept app. I do have some colors in here that I do want to use like the brown and the blues. Um, and that way we can get it done. I sketched this using an app called Lenya on my iPad. Um, they have some built-in templates like this. It allows me to, um, what does it allow me to do? It allows me, it, al it has the templates built in so I can just sketch what I need to sketch in here. It's not a full-blown design, like something I could do in, in this app sketch or in like Affinity Designer, but you know, it works close enough. So with that being said, let's go ahead and launch a new app in Xcode and start this project. Again, thanks everyone who's tuning in right now. I really appreciate it. We are going to have a fun run at starting a brand new app. 
Uh, right now we're just gonna call it a single view page app. So then we're gonna hit next. Um, I'm just gonna call it coffee timer for now. I'm sure if I decide to use it, great. If I decide to actually release it, it'll be something different. If I decide not to release it, it'll, at least I know what it's called. Um, like I said, it's, it's kind of a pet project for my, me and myself right now. Not really anything else, which is totally fine. Uh, yeah, when we'll go ahead and use Core Data and CloudKit just because if I do release it, I have those stubs added in already. So let's hit next. It's going to ask me where to place it. Great coffee app. Um, this, I can't create a Git repo right now purely because it's already inside a Git repo. So we're going to hit create and let's go ahead and open that um, Git Fox. All right, so it's creating, it's just pegging my computer a bit. Um, Git Fox is a new Git client that I'm using. It's included in the set app, um, in the set app uh, subscription. So it's kind of fun there. Um, cool. I don't like that it defaults to that. I just want to use an 11 Pro because that's what I have. Um, so I'm just going to have the default be the iPhone 11 Pro because that's what my day-to-day -day device is and that's like the easiest to actually pull out whenever I'm at the counter working on my, whoa, sorry, um, working on my coffee. Um, ooh, man, lots of red already. Um, let me get, I should have set these before I started. Let me, there we go. That should be a lot better to see. Is everything just, bold? I don't even want everything to be bold. I like when the, great. Um, we're going to it out, make it a full screen. Great. Now it should definitely be a bit, it's still small. Um, we're just going to increase the size, the font size here. It's going to be awful for me to navigate, but that should be definitely a lot easier for y'all to see for whoever chooses to watch this. Cool. Um, so with this coffee app, let me, so I'm going to open this preview over on the other screen here. That way I can just see a little bit better of it. Um, so you guys won't really be able to see it, but that's perfectly okay for the time being. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is wrap this into a V stack actually, because I have a bit of stuff in here. So we're going to do a VStack. Um, so if you just commit, what's really cool in Xcode in with Swift UI, so I am going to be using Swift UI throughout this entire project. Um, if you command click on a view that's already made, you actually get some options in here. And that's not, that's not just the case for um, just the views. We could command click on the body and it'll see everything else. Um, I really like the edit all in scope because like if I decide to change a function, a variable name, then it can go and change it all at the same time. So we're going to hit text, embed in a V stack here. Great. And I'm going to hit resume and it's going to take a little bit to build. One, it's the first time building. Two, it's just takes some time on the computer. I hope everyone's enjoying their stay at home or shelter in place or whatever your country, county, city, os government, all that is putting in place right now. Cause I mean, what else do we have to do besides that? Um, I had kind of started the app a little bit before, which is why there's all these R's down the left hand side. That's really hard to read in these blue things here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open GIF. I mean, get, Git Fox. I also have a GIF Fox for making GIFs. Um, and we're just going to say working copy. Starting over. 
Submit. Get it, but why? Adding. Okay, great. Um. Push. Just making sure pushing actually works here. Looks like it did. Great. Um. So back in here, we can see that it built here on this um, little canvas area here. Now we're going to be doing some fun stuff. So. The first thing I want to do is actually put in the whole title section. So that section being this part here um, that it kind of have boxed out. The title, edit, that kind of part. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Cool. Um, so that's going to say... Um, so whenever... I'm just going to give a little bit of a rundown of how I like to do things. I like to build things in little buildings blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, um, a new group called views. Um, that's just going to hold views. And then I'm going to also make a group inside here called, um, um, what, what should this be called? Naming things is one of the hardest times that I have. Uh, so we're going to call it. I don't want to call it content view. Um, because that's not right. May, uh, um, so what I'm looking for is for a name that's kind of like that main part. Um, we're gonna call it West. Uh, sometimes it's just like typing things and seeing where it goes. We're gonna call it. We'll just call it main. That's fine. Um, it's not fine. Calc you later calculation view. Cool. All right, I made one calculation view. Perfect. Um. Now we get to actually put in a new file here. And now this one I'm gonna call calc main. So this is a little bit redundant of what I'm doing purely because this is actually where that V stack's gonna live that holds everything. Um, I'm kind of thinking in respects of what I originally had planned in the app, which was to have a, where users and I could store a bunch of different ways to actually brew coffee, and then I select which one I want. Um, so from here, instead of calling a V stack, we're actually gonna call that calc main. Calc main. And we're gonna actually format that to be a little bit better. Um, so now if I run this again, we're just gonna hit resume. It's gonna build again, and we should see the exact same thing. So it shouldn't look any different. Um, by putting in a calculation main like this, it's going to allow me to just build inside that calc main itself and then expand out from there. Um, so whatever I toss into this calc main actually gets put in there. And this is gonna have to rebuild basically every time I switch a view um, because of this previews down here. It's this canvas area is based on what I have in my Swift UI here. So we're gonna hit new file. We're going to say, yep, Swift UI view, title, block. We're just going to call it a title block because that's where the title is actually going to be. Um, great, so let me see that preview again. So what we really need here is the title itself. And so this is going to have to be an H stack. Where it, which means it's a horizontal stack. Anything we place inside that H stack is going to be evenly spaced inside there as needed. So we're gonna do an H stack with a V stack inside that has that coffee to water ratio. Uh, and we can also see that coffee to water ratio is gonna be used again, but it's gonna be slightly different. So we're not gonna actually reuse that at all. Um, so let's work on that real quick. So we're gonna put this, like I said, in an H stack. 
Uh, we're just gonna call this Chemex because that's my brewer. My my brewing method is I use a Chemex, and then oh, it's not a V stack. It's an H stack. My bad. And then we're actually gonna put in a V stack here, and it's gonna be a there's a button first with an action. And so whenever you assign a button, you have to give it an action. And this action actually needs things inside it. So we're just going to say print toggle edit. And then um, this is going to be, and then you basically, so bu button, that looks pretty much similar to a um, function here. So then we give it a something to do inside. And then we have to actually do a closure that gives it the label. So once it says text, we're going to say edit. Um, but text needs a string inside. That should be right. And let me hit resume. And we should see here a thing that happens. A little bit brighter. Cool. Yeah, that definitely looks better. Um, my face looks a bit better. Okay, so let's see here. All right, so it says Camex edit. I haven't put the coffee ratio in yet, so let's go ahead and do that next. Um, so we're going to say, how does this look in here? Okay, so if you see this coffee ratio, I can do this one of two ways. I can do 16 grams. Well, we're going to do this the hard way, I think, um, because I don't know if this is going to work. No, it won't work. Uh, so inside the V stack, I actually have another H stack with a, with basically three V stacks, uh, two V stacks and the colons. Um, so inside V stack, we're gonna have a text that says 16 grams. Um, and then we also need one that says coffee. And then we're going to do a text in here. That's just here. So one of the big things that Apple touted when um, releasing SwiftUI is if you break up your views, it doesn't really cost that much processing power. So by us doing this, it's actually not completely killing the, pro killing the um, it's not going to kill the, the processing power on the phone or the iPad or whatever you choose to run this on. Even um, Mac OS could even run it if we wanted to. Um, so inside here, we're gonna say text. One gram water. Cool, and we should be able to see even it kind of like go here, I mean, update in the canvas as we type, um, which is great. And that's part of the joys of using Swift UI is that you can actually use this canvas to kind of do a live preview of what's going on. Um, whenever I started at, whenever I started development type work, this is actually what I really enjoyed about app about web development is I could get really, is that really quickly I could get up and going and I could see what I was doing because it was um, right there in the browser. So whenever this was introduced last summer, it, it was actually really nice because then I could, I didn't have to, I mean, yes, I still have to wait for it to build, but it's kind of a lot quicker than it used to be. All right, so with Chemex, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually make this font size a title. Um, you can either do it inside code itself, or you could honestly even just go over here if you're using the canvas to your inspector view. And we're gonna say large title, and it automatically adds the font for us, which is kind of nice. Great. And we're also going to add in a spacer here. That way we get some space between the title and then that coffee water ratio type deal. Cool. And we're going to do one more in between the button and the ratio. Um, actually, instead of spacer, we're going to get some padding in there um, on the bottom specifically. If you notice, I'm not really typing in any values. So Swift UI has some values that are automatically given to us, which is what's happening here. All right, so 16 grams, one gram of water. It being a standard body is perfectly fine, but I want the coffee and the water to be a little bit smaller. 
So you can actually see in here there's a um, footnote option that should make it a bit smaller, I believe. Yep, great. And we're going to copy and use that for water as well. Um, if you looked inside my preview, you would also see that edit is red. So we can change that text to be red here and change the foreground co uh, color to be red. Great, and that looks so this section looks pretty darn close to what I have here. There's no divider, like harsh line yet. Um, we're gonna actually add that into the main calc main view right underneath where we actually call the, um, right underneath, underneath where we call this title view. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So inside calc main. Yeah, we're gonna say, instead of hello world, we're gonna call the title block. Perfect. Um, inside here, we're also, if you notice that C is really butt up against the edge and same with the water. So we're going to actually wrap some padding around this, but we're going to make it horizontal. So it applies to both the left and the right side of this title block. Great, and now it looks a little bit better on spacing wise. Cool. Uh, so now, like I said, we're gonna add in that divider here. Diver, divider. Spelling is one of the most important things when you're developing, not just so you can spell your, like, your variables right, but because if you're using, um, what are you using? If you are using the built-in APIs, you have to spell them right. Um, so instead of doing my padding on this one specific title block, we're actually going to do it out here on the V stack so that everything gets that um, padding on the side. So we can actually see that there's a small little divider right there. Great. So that V stack is done. Um, then what's next? So the next thing down is going to be our coffee grinds and our water needed. Um, and that coffee ground is actually going to be a button in the end of it that allows for the amount to be entered. So if I tap on that, it should bring in a, a modal type view that asks me how much coffee. We're not gonna worry about that right now. My main goal, because I'm gonna be done about 7.30, is to just get this kind of nicely coded. Um, not It doesn't even have to necessarily have any variables in it, like that coffee ground amount, like that 60 grams right here, is going to have to be um, a variable so that we can change that and edit how much is in there. And then same thing for the water. Um, even this ratio that we just made is in theory at some point going to have to be a variable so that it, this can influence that. Uh, and by this, I mean the coffee to water ratio can influ the coffee to water ratio can influence the, in the edit screen can influence the 16 grams to one gram coffee ratio there. Um, so with that being said, Let's keep going and get that coffee ground section done. Um, cool. Sorry about that. Um, great, so coffee grounds, we're gonna change that. So, and another reason why I like to break it up like this is because there's a limitation in Swift UI and there's a, it's actually like into the Swift itself by calling like this, where I just do view after view after view after view, there's only 10 views that can be nested. So I could only have 10 sub views in this V stack. So by using the sub view method like I am here, um, then I don't get limited that much. I don't get limited in th into that. Um, so what we're gonna do is make a new file and it's gonna be a new Swift UI file. And we're just gonna call it um, coffee amount. All right, so underneath coffee amount, what we're gonna do is, what does it need to look like? I always have to keep checking what it needs to look like. 
I could just open it on my iPad and then not worry about it. Um, we are going to, so it's just a text, a space, and then another variable. So um, that is actually going to have to be an H stack since it has to be, um, there's two ways I could do this. I could either do it as a pure text, but then there's no spacing I can save between each. Um, and I can't just, I shouldn't say can't, I don't know how to separate a text like that, or I can do an H stack, which is what I'm going to do. Inside the H stack is going to live the two text views that have the coffee ground and the 60 grams and then the spacer in between so that they get spread out um, perfectly. I see I have a second viewer. So thank, thanks for thanks for joining. We are making a brand new app or I'm making a brand new app for that helps me with my coffee in the morning. Cool. So like I said, this is an H stack. And we're going to do in here a text that uh, coffee ground. And then we're going to have a spacer in here. And then we're going to do another text 60 grams. Um, and I'm going to hit resume here so that we can actually see it happen on this preview. Um, while that's building, I can say it. I am going to start a second stream basically on Tuesdays and that, or either Tuesdays or Wednesdays. I forgot which one I said it's listed on my channel. Um, but during basically in the middle of the day at like 10 AM, I am going to be working on nothing. I will be playing some video games for about an hour just for, uh, my fun. And because what else am I doing right now besides this? And I figured um, the code would be on Monday nights and then the video games would be another night. Um, so cool. Now that 60 grams is in there and we can see it in that canvas view, we're going to actually give it a new color. Um, I don't think that there is actually a brown color. Yeah, there's not. Um, it should be like, there's an error. Cool. So we're going to go add in this color. Actually, I'm going to make a new tab. Um, that way I can just toggle which tab I'm in. Um, we're going to go into the assets folder here. Add new color set. I don't, so yeah, we're going to add in this new color. Um, color is going to be called coffee and let's color mix it. So really, um, red and green together. Okay, what if I take out more gray? Um, I don't want gray. I actually want cool. Um, Let's go to a color picker inside a browser. Um, color picker. I should, being a lighting person, know what colors make brown, um, but I don't. I can do it in HSI, but I can't do it in RGB. Um, so we're just going to do this. Cool. Um, so that is going to be copy and pasting that because I can do a hex decimal here. There we go. Now that is a nice coffee color. Um, great. And then to, so it's universal, so that means it should work on everything. Um, we are going to go into back into coffee amount. And we're actually going to declare this as a color. I'm first going to format. I don't like my spaces being four. I like them being two. I think that's just a holdover from whenever I was doing web development. Um, but we're going to do let coffee equals color dot. 
I always forget how to do this. I did it once. Um, oh. UI color, maybe? Did I call it coffee? I don't remember if I called it coffee. I uh, lowercase coffee. And we're just gonna. Alright, so now we can say coffee. And that should make it. Try again. Um, feel free, that person who's viewing. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all my viewers. So if you want to ask questions, feel free to dump them in the chat. If you want me to chat more about what I'm exactly doing, let me know. Um, I'm still kind of relatively new, so that's always fun. And I sometimes crash logs are good, sometimes they're bad. Uh, and I gotta change how these look. Yeah, but n every I don't see any crash logs. Why can I not preview this file? What's it about? I'm sorry about. Um, oh, that's fun. Diagnostics. Okay. Um. Domain rendering service was interrupted. User info in this localized description rendering wasn't okay. Can we just try again? Um, oh, there we go. Now it worked this time. So something was weird. It probably didn't like that I was changing everything. I know that's the canvas area. Definitely does not like when I'm declaring new variables in here. Um, so basically it's just like coffee. So we just created a new color and then did that. We could, what's also cool about the color assets in here real quick is if you wanted to make like a dark and light, in case you're not familiar with this, if you wanted to make like a dark and light is you can actually go in here, change your appearances to any light and dark, and you can actually change what the colors are based on light and dark um, scheme. I just need it on any right now, so it doesn't matter. Um, great, so we have coffee ground, 60 grams. We're just gonna do this exact same thing, but with water now. Uh, so I'm gonna actually copy and paste this. Copy, um, and we're gonna right click, new file, Swift UI view, water amount, Great, we're here. The first thing I'm gonna do, control, uh, command A, uh, select everything and format to the proper spaces. Nope. I don't really need to build, stop building. I know that's my fault, I'm hitting the wrong shortcuts. Um, we're gonna call this water amount. Great. Um, So 60 grams, that is, I like to, I'm giving it realistic numbers so that I know it's going to be spaced out correctly, nine, six, or look correctly, um, and we're just going to say dot blue. Resume. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, thanks, semi semi beard. Um, appreciate it. Yeah, Swift UI is fun. I've actually released two apps in Swift UI now. Um, so this has been fun. I just wanted to make start a brand new one from scratch. Um, and actually, because I was trying to do one before, um, but I was doing a lot more of stuff I didn't know. So I was like, let me just go with the basics and work off a design that I've 
work off something that I've actually worked on designing. Um, so I have my water amount done, my coffee amount done. Um, so now I'm going to add them all into calc main here. So underneath the divider, we're going to add in that coffee amount view. And then we're going to add in that water amount view. And then it should catch up soon. I'm kind of surprised that there's not more people doing Swift UI, but I can also understand because it's kind of new that it's not really happening that much. Um, so we have our coffee ground, our water amount. You know, those really aren't as big as I'd like them. Um, but let's keep roughing it in first. Uh, get this design roughed in first. So I'm going to put in another divider. And then what's next? It's our timer and then a start button. And then we can go back and make sure it all looks correct. Um, so let's make a new view here. So whenever I'm making new views, I just right click on the group that I want to add it in and hit new, new file. We're going to add Swift UI view and we're going to call it a timer. Yep, that should be fine. Oh. Um, and really, this is going to be the easiest one to, for us to at least simulate. We're just going to have it be zero, 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 zero. And now when we add it in here, we are going to put a spacer, timer, so what we should see is this chemx part is going to go way up towards the top like it should. Then we're gonna get our coffee ground water amount and then we should get that s a lot of space and timer right there at the bottom because I haven't put anything in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Spacer start, eight, nine. Cool. Um, So we should be getting pretty close to the top, bottom there. Cool. So yeah, you can see our spacer, our timer. That might end up changing to be more of a, well, timer definitely needs to be larger font. Um. And it might end up changing the little bit of a design. Again, the coffee ground water amount is not big enough whatsoever. Um, cool. So let's go in make that start button. We're going to actually do that in a separate file as well. Um, I'm going to call it a timer button though, instead of a start button, because it's going to have to say stop also. Um, and I can do all of that inside the time. Actually, instead of doing it in the timer button, I'm going to do it in timer. Um, one second guys, I'll be right back. Oops. Okay. Sorry about that pause. Um, hard stuff happening out in the rest of the house and had to go check it out, but everything is good. So we're going to go back and keep doing it. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is actually, we're going to end up adding the button inside this timer view, which is why I deleted that timer button itself. Um, and inside this timer view, it's going to hold all the logic for actually starting the count up because I like to start from zero and just count up whenever I'm brewing my coffee. And then it's gonna 
also handle the logic to change the timer buttons like text and its um, color also. Cool. So um, instead of it just being text in here, we're going to actually embed that in a V stack. And we'll put some a spacer here. Why not for now? Button. Um, and inside the action, I just like to print off what I plan on doing to get it to keep it going. Toggle timer, and then we're gonna put it in a te our label here now. Text. Okay, and we're gonna hit resume. Thanks for sticking around while I had that pause. Um, like I said, I just had to go and check out and make sure the rest of the house was okay. Okay, cool. So we have that timer, start, stop here. Um, we're actually gonna change that font to be a bigger font. I don't want it to be bigger than the title itself that we have on the main page. So we're just gonna name it title. Um, and let's, great, so that's done. So we're gonna go back to main. Let this update real quick. Um, so the spacer itself did not stick. And this is part of the joys of Swift UI is figuring out why that happened. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually just do a padding on the top here. Um, that way it's a little bit further down. And I can also specify this number in my padding um, if I don't like the default padding. So let's do a resume and see how that works. Cool, so that's a little bit better. Um, I like that spacing except for like the button itself. So what we're gonna do is go back into timer and we're gonna move the spacer from the top to the bottom. And then we're going to actually add a padding to the bottom of the tech of the of the timer text. And let's make that let's give it a good mount there. All right. Um that's uh, it helps if I type in different numbers to actually see what's going on. Great. Um, and then we're going to do a outline around the box here. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can do this. I like, because I like rounded buttons, I have to do it a little bit different. Um, I'm going to open up one of my other app documents real quick, app code, app files real quick, because I actually did it in there. Um, log OSC, there it goes. Um, I actually did it in here and it's a little bit easier for me to explain how it's done and also remember how to do it. Log OSC, views, settings. Uh, and it's gonna go under. Let's see, I think it's there. Um, Yeah, so it should be here, where to go? Um, on the restore? Nope, and it's not in that one. It is in a different app, uh, it's in a different file. Same app that I was in, just a different file. Uh, it's under views. So I do try to keep the same file structure where I have a views and then inside views I have the different view uh, actual views. Put page. Put page. Okay, but what where what am I opening here? So if it's not settings. Uh, play programming punt page. Wow, where did this go? Um, pro 
open for me. Under settings. Ah, purchase punt page. There it is. And there should be a restore purchase button. Cool. Okay, so what I like to do, and you could either do this in the text itself inside the button label, or you can do it outside the button label. I like to do it inside the button label. That way there's padding all around the button. So the touch target itself for the button is a bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to copy that basically, and we're going to change the color, colors and stuff, but we're going to copy that part, put it in here. And then we'll see that they'll come through here. Cool. Um, so we're going to change the corn. So padding eight, we're actually going to increase that a little bit to make the button itself a bit bigger. So let's make that a 10. Um, let's make the outline. So now we get to change what the outline color is. I like for green to mean start. So we're going to change that to a dot green. And it should change all that. Um, corner radius should be fine at 10, but and the but we really need to change the line width here. So let's change that to five. five burr, burr. We're not gonna change um, two or three. Number two. I think two is going to look better and we're going to keep that green as well. Um, let's actually just, instead of a, a foreground color, let's do the background color. Background color is green. Again, typing is useful and we'll make that a white. I think will come through pretty easily, pretty well. Great. Um, so I should be able to actually get rid of even the overlay since I don't really need to do the outline. Um, so what the overlay did though, before I get rid of it is it added in the, I'll make this red real quick so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Um, maybe there we go. So it added in this outline around the um, button itself. Apple decided at some point to pull the border for the rounded rectangle um, in, from the betas. So the overlay was a little bit of a hacky way to get around it. Um, a lot of Swift UI to get some customized features seems really hacky. And this is one of the ways it does. Um, Eventually, what I'll end up having to do, though, for the timer is to actually get set a max, a width, a max a minimum width so that it can start and stop and the button doesn't change based on what what state it's in. But I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to go back to Calc Main and see it all together real quick. Excuse me. Great. Um. I mean, that honestly looks pretty close to what I have here um, on the left hand half here, at least. I'm still missing. Uh, okay, so water need it. Okay, I'm missing a whole section, which is also why the spacing looks weird. I'm missing my bloom section. So let's go add that real quick. New file. So right now we're just working on the design aspect of it, and then I'm gonna say probably next week we'll hit more of the intro we'll still have to do the design for the edit page and then afterwards we'll be able to start dealing with like state management and stuff like that so that when I adjust the coffee amount it adjusts how much water is actually needed when I adjust and how much the bloom is and then um actually we'll do that next week we'll handle all the state on one page next week so the I gotta write this down before I forget um I keep index cards next to my desk for these purposes. Um, but um, I said, oh, thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it. Um, I said, 
I said that I wanted to next week do state on main page. Cool. Yeah, so next week I'm going to do state on the main page. Okay, so this, so I'm making a new app, new one for the bloom, blooming process. And um, if you're not familiar with making coffee, that's totally fine. This is just basically like the blooming stage is really like right after you put in, um, you put in the grounds, the water's all warm, all hot. Now then you have to pour hot water over the grounds so that they bloom so that the flavor gets out there more, uh, that you're able to get more of that coffee flavor. So water for bloom, which is pretty close to water needed. Um, I probably could have made this one view and then adjusted. It's fine though. Um, water for bloom, bloom length. So we're actually going to just make this one view, I think. Um, so we're going to need an eight, a V stack and then two H stacks inside. We can tell my computer is getting a little bit overworked because it is not wanting to auto auto um, fill as much as need it as it usually does. Water for bloom spacer text. Um, I said 120 gra uh, grams, I think. Um, and then we're gonna do dot font, uh, foreground color, blue. And then we're gonna do another one basically the exact same way, except it's gonna say um, time for bloom. Wow, a blooming, bloom time. Bloom, water, uh, bloom, water for bloom, bloom time. We'll just keep it the same. Um, and this is going to be, I hope there's an orange color. Yeah, cool. And what was that timing? One minute, 30 seconds, we're going to say. Cool. And how I brew my coffee and like these values is not set in stone. It's just how I, the values that I found work the best for me and my wife while we do, while in the mornings. So that doesn't mean they're necessarily correct. Um, and I usually actually end up going over my wa total water amount. I should figure that out at some point. Um, but this gets me the closest. Cool, so we have water for bloom, time for bloom, which this time for bloom is going to match the exact, um, so we're gonna actually change that to one. This time for bloom is actually going to match the, um, timer time so that whatever on the time so or it's not going to match the timer time so as the timer counts up then once it hits the bloom time it's going to pause and change that color at some point cool so we have our timer in there so then if we go to back to our count main um right here we're going to put another divider And we're gonna put in blooming. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it decided to crash again. Let's try again. Great, we have our ground, our water, water for bloom, and then our time. Um, I really want this to be a little bit further down than it is currently. And I'm going to, and actually I'm going to stop it here. We're going to make those fine tweaks tomorrow. Uh, I mean next week. So just a little bit of a heads up what my plan is for the rest of the week. And um, I'm in a, I'm in a pretty happy spot with where this ended right now. Uh, so that's good. But just a little bit for next week, what I'm gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna work, I'm gonna work on some of these tweaks, figure out how I can do some custom font sizes in Swift UI. So we're gonna tackle that a little bit next week. Um, and then also work on the state so that when I change the coffee ground, it's gonna change that water amount and it'll change that bloom amount. Um, and then we can, and then we'll go from there. 
anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for the follow, Simi Beard, as well. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I am also adjusting my... I'm adding in a new stream every... I think it said... I think it's every Wednesday. Uh, whatever it says on the little countdown thing on my channel, either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll have to check again. I should know. I literally just made this decision yesterday. Uh, I mean, earlier today. But at 10 a.m. on one of them, I'm actually going to do some, like, video game streaming um, from my Switch, probably with Splatoon or Tetris or Catan. Um, I might throw some Animal Crossing in there, depending if I feel like it or not. Um, but, yeah. So, next week, though, next Monday, will be more coding. Um, thanks for watching again. And we will, and I will be back on either Tuesday or Wednesday at 10 a.m.